because there is a value component to it. If this were completely stabilized, rents already up there, then our yield would be about 5% years one to five, okay? But there's some meat on the bone, quote unquote, allowing us to be able to fix this up. And then 9.6, 10.9, 12.4, and then upon sale, 138, 138%. It ends up being an average of about 15% per year after return of capital. Let's see here. So what I want to go through with you is how we analyze this. Okay, in the private placement memorandum, Has anybody gotten the private, received the private PPM yet? Oh, wow, okay, good. Let's see here. I'm sorry, I'm so technically inept here at trying to show you this. Let's see here. Okay, the private placement memorandum. Who's actually read the whole thing? The whole thing. You've read it cover to cover. Okay, because quite honestly, when it gets into the tax section, I start to doze off. Let's talk about the PPM. Okay. As you know, the PPM is disclosure of everything we know about the property up to that time. So when a PPM comes out, we've already usually completed at least some of our due diligence. We've completed all, we've got it under contract. We've negotiated it. We've done at least some of the due diligence. We've created the investment presentation, which is the Excel spreadsheet um, that goes over all the numbers and we've already verified some of the data to make sure that that is accurate. Now, some of the things that might happen afterward as Vicki and Ken get more in depth into the due diligence is some of that might be tweaked a little bit. We've already got a, uh, a quote from a lender, which by the way, on this property, 12 year loan, Fannie Mae non-recourse with five years of interest only. Okay, so that helps on the returns. Um, we are shorting the dollar for 12 years. Okay, um, and for those of you who, who remember the 70s and in, the inflation that happened then and where interest rates were there, and how did real estate do at that time? Zoomed, zoomed. zoom, zoom, Mazda. Um, Okay, here's the PPM, which is not showing up on here, so I'm not gonna go through all that. The things you gotta look at are the exactly, mainly look at the operating agreement. That's how we're gonna manage the, the organization that owns the property, okay? On this one, we have lowered, because it is easier to manage and all yields are being tightened up. The lead compensation has been reduced on this property. So it's only 15% it includes the KPs of which are two other KPs along with me are in the room right now. Um, and uh, they've already seen the property and moving ahead. Uh, by the way, Doherty Mortgage gave me a glowing report to another lender for, an assump for the assumption we're doing on Pioneer, which was very humbling and uh, and, and I was shocked it, they went out on the limb so much for me. Um, but let's talk about this. Okay, and I wanna go through some more details on everything. We're paying $25,750,000, dollars $89,000 a door, okay? Anybody think that's high? Yes, I think it's high. Um, but it's only high in comparison to the other stuff we've bought. It was built in 1983. It's a gorgeous property in a great location. 
It's in very good shape. We still have budgeted in nearly $7,000 a door in capital improvements. I'll go through the details on that in a minute. We're gonna have $300,000 on our operating account. Even as our capital required, it's 8.6, combined with our $20,500,000 loan, of all in at 29, which is just over 100 grand a door. Okay, 80s product, it's gorgeous, it's nice. Okay, you saw the video. Average home price, I don't even remember, what is it? Average home price is 190,000 in Arlington, but that includes South Arlington. So, uh, you know, there's, there's some, right. Okay, here is our unit mix. Again, we always look at that. Uh, really a majority, about half, uh, actually is our one bedrooms, 650 square feet. 80s construction, if you go inside one of the units, they are all the same. The units got a little bit smaller overall. They all have a fireplace, in, which nobody uses, um, and uh, they, they all look identical. There are full-size washer-dryer connections in every unit. Um, on the third floor, they're included with the unit as an incentive that somebody has done in the past, so that you rent a third floor unit, you get a free washer and dryer. Uh, as part of your incentive for being on the third floor. So you don't have to move one up and down, pre presumably. Current rents are a dollar three a foot, okay? We're projecting a dollar 25. What amazes me, if you recall with DeSoto, I'm sorry, yeah, DeSoto, is rents were as high as a dollar 20 in DeSoto anyway, in DeSoto. So this is Arlington 360 and 30. So we're projecting a dollar twenty-five. Okay. Here is an important part of that. Yes, sir. Uh, this is marketing material. Um, Brantley had like eleven different designations for units. Uh, what are the top differences? They're okay. They're in the uh, in the information provided by the broker. There is numerous other designations for different units. It could be pool view. It could be what floor it's on. It, there's just different ways to differentiate so that we can raise rents on certain units or lower them on others. So, I mean, so that way we can maximize dollar amounts for those. What's funny is, is some properties, they will um, charge extra for third floor units for the view. And in some properties, they have to lower the, the rents for the third floor units because you have to walk up three floors. And quite honestly, the only difference in my mind is how good the on-site staff is on selling the third floor units. Um, because they'll, uh, they'll pay to join a gym to go on a Stairmaster, but then they'll pay more for a first floor unit. Yeah. Be sure to visit us at darwingerman.com there you can register for all of our information and see all of the videos. And make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.